yeah, I've settled in really well and um, I'm enjoying playing my football and, and training every day, so hopefully that can, can just continue. Uh, we're looking forward to the game uh, Ajax against Aston Villa. What's your opinion about this game and uh, the chances for Aston Villa and Ajax? Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting game. Aston Villa haven't been quite as spectacular in Europe as they have been in the Premier League. In the Premier League, they've blown teams away. They've you know, had sort of statement victories against Manchester City, Arsenal um, throughout the season and obviously have Tottenham on the weekend. So all, all these tough tests, but... In Europe, it's not been quite the same, um, and I think Ajax will will pose a threat, despite perhaps it's been obviously, obviously a difficult season. But uh, I think they'll they'll expect a tough test, especially with Oli Watkins in uh, in uh, he's such in uh, in his best shape, maybe if I can say so. Uh, he's the one to watch for uh, Arsenal Villa and also for the defenders of Ajax. Yeah, he's been an amazing form, an incredible player. He's so robust, very athletic. Um, and his goals speak for themselves, assists as well. He's always so dependable for Villa, he's always available. He's got a great touchwood injury record and um, yeah, he's a really reliable striker. And I think if it wasn't for Harry Kane, he, you know, you'd be thinking he would be starting for England. It's only Harry Kane that probably um, demotes him a little bit. Uh, tomorrow you're going to play against uh, Oli Watkins. He's been in an absolutely amazing form. <laughs> How would you rate him? And uh, Could he be a threat for Harry Kane in the English squad? <laughs> um... <laughs> Ollie's, I think he's an outstanding player. He has everything, you know, as a striker. I think he holds the ball up so well, um, looks after the ball, so good in front of goal with his finishing, but his movement, runs in behind, he's quick, good in the air. So as a number nine, he's, he's pretty got, much got everything, to be honest. Um, he's a great person, a great lad as well, works especially, uh, especially really hard on, on uh, off the field. Uh, Ollie's in fantastic form and I'm sure... Um, the England managers looking at them from the for the next camp. So they have to play against Ajax. Uh, five years ago, Ajax blew uh, Real Madrid away in the Champions League, and now they're on this stage acting. Uh, what's the opinion in England uh, about Ajax, and wh how did what did they know about the downfall of Ajax? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because coming into a game like this historically, you would never have imagined Aston Villa to be anywhere near favourites, really, um, with with the history and the tradition at Ajax, obviously. Um, I suppose the general feeling is perhaps that Ajax have been on the wane a little bit in recent years. Obviously, some players have transitioned to England. hasn't been quite too seamless for them. Anthony being probably the most high profile at Manchester United has, has really struggled and, and looked just miles off it, really. Um, Eric Ten Hag, obviously, people are asking questions of him. He seems just always under pressure. Um, and there seems to be a sense that you know he's on borrowed time, really, already. So... Yeah, I think the, the the perception of Ajax has probably changed a little bit in recent years, but there's still sort of the utmost utmost respect of what they've done, obviously over many many years. Um, is there any particular player of Ajax that that's that's on the radar of English clubs, as you would say? Well, the obvious one that everybody's looking at is Jordan Henderson. To see how he yeah. fares here. Is, is he going to be there tomorrow, the English English manager? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you you have uh, good contacts with him, and do you think you also have better chance of playing at the English squad now that you? been here and also play in Europe in, at this stage? Um, yeah, I've, I've always had good contact. The manager always has good contact with the, with the players, of course, um, as you know. Um, but for me, I've just you know concentrated on doing my job for Ajax. That's the most important thing, try to perform um, and help the team as much as possible. And if I'm doing that, then maybe it gives us a, a good opportunity to to get into the, the national team. Um, all eyes are on Henderson after him coming back to Europe, obviously the Saudi thing. The Saudi experiment, if you like, um, <laughs> but backfired really. Uh, and yeah, we, we want to see how he's doing. That again, there's probably a, a line of thought that you know, should he be in the England squad? Should his place be as secure as it seems from the outside looking in? And um, you know, is is playing regularly for Ajax enough to, to warrant him that place, given the competition for places? Um, well, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed the first month or so here. You know, I've settled in really well, thanks to all the staff, the players and, and everyone around the club really in the city, everything. So I've I've really enjoyed it. Um obviously still a short space of time but yeah I've settled in really well and um I'm enjoying playing my football and, and training every day so hopefully that can can just continue. But yeah all eyes on him and obviously Tuba Akpom as well. Yeah so uh, an interesting move for him. 
Yeah, so how, how, how did people in England respond to that uh, that, that move to Ajax? Because he, he was considered uh, yeah, he has a good player, good striker in the championship. Now he's playing at Ajax and he's, he's not even in the starting eleven. Yeah, no, it was an interesting one because in the championship he, he sort of ripped up for ones of a better phrase, scored loads of goals and you think, is he going to get a Premier League move? The Ajax move seemed a bit of a surprise, but yeah, it's not, not quite worked out, has it, I don't think. Um, and yeah, it's a weird one because he was at Arsenal, obviously he had to go elsewhere to find his... I think he went out to Greece and then um, Middlesbrough... Yeah, now Ajax, but wouldn't be surprised to see him maybe come back. He was linked with Forrest uh, in January, and yeah, it'd be interesting to see how that develops over time. And uh, another player, uh, Carlos Forbes, uh, used to be in the in the City Academy. Um, it's also people in England maybe expect more of him uh, as he comes from uh, City, scored a lot of lot of goals, made a move to Ajax, and then yeah, he's also not in the starting eleven. Yeah, I mean it's, it's different, isn't it? It's funny how we're we're very critical, or maybe. Um, <laughs> quick to judge Dutch players or players who move from Holland to, to England and it's only fair that they get the same treatment the other way around. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, no, well, on the other hand, it, it, when Jordan Henderson came here, everybody in the Netherlands, especially at Ajax, was ecstatic. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a really good platform for him and clearly I think it's a much better move than going to Seld. You know, if he'd have come directly to Ajax from Liverpool, I think people wouldn't have been asking so many questions. But now he sort of created that focus as a result of going away to come back. Um, I think his place is, is quite secure for England. You know, obviously, Gareth Southgate's been over to watch him here. We know he's a big fan of Jordan Henderson. And Jordan Henderson does have still quite a lot of credit in the bank, I think, in terms of what he's done for England. But I think, obviously, his life choices, if you can put it that way, in, in recent months have obviously come under scrutiny. <laughs>